On the menu today is Julia Child's Tort Limousine. Yes! Not quite sure what it is just yet, but yes! Sounds awesome. Welcome back to Jamie and Julia. Oh! <laughs> bon appétit. Back to JC's Mastering the Art of French Cooking V2 today. And we're gonna make a tort limousine. Uh, you know, the boring English way of saying it. Potato pie with herbs and cream. Gives you an idea of what we're making, but en français, limousine. You know, any recipe that has that word in it, I think I'm on board with that. No clue if it's referring to the vehicle, probably not. Or is it an adjective word to refer to the French city of Limoges? Probably. I just looked that up. In this excellent recipe, the sliced potatoes are seasoned with melted butter and herbs, and when they are tender inside their crust, a mixture of cream and beaten egg is poured into them through the chimney hole. You know, I've made a couple different Julia Child potato dishes so far with the potato pancakes and the cheesy scallop potatoes and the palm anna. Now with the addition of the tort limousine, it's gonna be a bit of a potato off. You know, we're gonna find out which one is the best. So we're gonna start this off with uh, my dearly beloved food processor. Love this thing. Love this thing. Love using it for making pastry dough. Now Julia says to use only half the pate brise ordinaire recipe coming out of the cookbook. And I figure, no, you know what? I'm gonna use all of it. I'm gonna cover my ass because I don't wanna get to the finish line and all of a sudden I don't have enough pastry dough. So I'm gonna go for the whole thing. So firstly goes in one pound, 453 grams of all-purpose flour. Two teaspoons of salt. I had to double check this next part, just to make sure, because I was like, for a tort limousine, do you really want a quarter cup of sugar? But that's what it says, and uh, I just follow. I'm a follower. <laughs> it seems like a lot of sugar for a tort limousine, but what the hell do I know? I've never even had it before. I didn't even know it existed an hour ago. So let me just first pulse this together, just to get the, the mix all introduced. Now right here is nine ounces, 255 grams of diced up chilled butter. Get the flour covered in the fat and it's gonna look like little grains of sand. Keep your eye on it, it's just kind of like uh, intuition. <laughs> Woo! Look at all that flour. Look at the mess this is creating. Okay. Okay, I think we're good there. Over here, five tablespoons of chilled vegetable shortening. Same deal, couple pulses. This is one cup of very cold water and I'm just gonna stream this in while this is running, but I'm gonna keep my eye on, not much, not much. I'll know when I see it. She said three quarters a cup to a cup. I think we're there. That was half a cup. Now it should look like a bunch of small lumps and when you grab some in your palm, you can kind of squeeze it and it will hold its shape. Let's take all of this flour here. Yes. <laughs> and I need to get this into a rough mass. This is the perfect, this feels perfect to me. All right, this is the part that always cracks me up, but I gotta do the smear with the heel of my hand just a couple times for a final blending. All that fat just officially introduced into the flour. One last time. That's it. God, I love making pastry dough. It's so damn easy. Julia likes to do this double protection here. I'm gonna cover it with plastic wrap. In that goes into the bag. Into an acceptable round kind of shape there. That's it. Chill this for two hours. How long does that take? Wow. Under 10 minutes. I've planned this accordingly so that by the time I'm done all the prep and mise en place the hell out of this thing, the dough will be ready. Bowl me. Thank you. You fill this up with water. Okay, that should suffice. Okay, so we're gonna start off with six cups of thinly sliced all-purpose potatoes. An all-purpose potato is a potato that has not too much or not too little moisture and starch. It's like right in the sweet spot and Yukon Gold is usually the potato to go with. You know, a little fun fact about these Yukon Gold potatoes is they're not from the Yukon, so I don't know why they're called that. They actually originated in my hometown in Ontario, Canada, Guelph. 
Guelph. I don't know why they're called Yukon Gold Potatoes. They should be called Guelph Gold Potatoes, the GGs. That's what we're gonna call them going forward. Well, at least for today. Let's get peeling. In my downtime, I looked up what a tort limousine should look like. There was no sign of potato skin on any of the potatoes. So I'm gonna take that lead. Now I guesstimated that six cups worth of potatoes is roughly two pounds worth. I don't know if my guesstimates are correct. Actually, I don't even know where I came up with that number. I think somewhere online. So uh, don't quote me on that. We're gonna find out along the way. I think that should be enough to cover my ass. I hope so. So, you know, I'm thinking thinly sliced potatoes. I'm looking at images online. There's no mention here in the book, but one would assume that reaching up above the microwave, grabbing your mandolin, would be a safe bet. And by safe, I mean very dangerous bet. Hence the glove and this thing. Last time I used the mandolin, everyone got upset that I wasn't using this. That way and down, yeah. Maybe like that. I've tried that before. How do you like them potatoes? Let's go a bit thinner. So with this mandolin here, I'll be honest, it freaked me out at first. First I was afraid. I was petrified. I love this thing now. Look at this go. Yeah. Okay, we're gonna quickly just pay a visit to Jamie's garden here. And what I need, <laughs> the chives look perfect this season, so let's take a couple of those. Parsley? Yeah. Yeah, that's about a quarter cup worth, right? Oh man, the parsley's really blooming. And basil. Parsley is washed, basil and chives need a rinsing. Chopped parsley, bracket, not pressed down. Just a rough chop. So I'm gonna mince up some chives. And one big old community mince. I'm gonna hold off on mincing up the basil right now because I don't want it to oxidize while I fiddle around with things trying to figure out what I gotta do next. Oops, the parsley just fell over. Okay, I'm really gonna have to dust off this thing. I don't think this has been used in years. That is all, <laughs> that, okay. You don't wanna know what's on there. But uh, I'm gonna wash this, but this is what I'm gonna use, my spring form pan. Needs to be nine inches, right? Nine inches in diameter. It's perfect. So butter the inside of my spring form pan. What we're gonna do is lightly flour my work surface. It's finally time to bring over the pastry dough. It's been a few hours. Roll two thirds of the pastry into a circle. So two thirds of half of what I'm using. I'm using way more than she suggested. Why don't we just split this in half to stir it? Roll this into a circle 14 inches in diameter. 14 inches in diameter. I don't know why you're making a rectangle when she clearly says a diameter. Circle, man. Just to be on the safe side, I'm gonna bring over a little more dough. I always find that when Julia says use a certain amount of pastry dough, I always need more. It's just what I find. So that's a good thing that I made a little extra. It's the worst looking circle I've ever seen. All right, that's 14 inches, but could you make it a little more circular? If you're not gonna roll the circle, then I have to do it manually. It's come to that. Perfect. Kind of just kind of scrape this up onto the rolling pin. Be careful because it is warming up. Spring form pan. So we gotta line this mold. It's a big ass mold. It's one and a half inch overhang. That should be good enough to hold everything in there, I think. I mean, we're going for something that's a bit Rustic looking, right? And that gives me a little carte blanche to do whatever the hell I want with this thing. 
patchwork if I need to. And uh, yeah, make it look <laughs> make it look the part. So before we do anything with that dough, we gotta mince up the basil. We're gonna do a chiffonade to start, because I love saying the word chiffonade. Oven's been preheated to 425F. Probably good that you know that. I got a, two tablespoons in total worth of chives and basil that have both been minced. And I got a quarter cup of chopped parsley. Four tablespoons of butter that I just need to melt this really quick. And while I'm fiddling around with things, I'm just gonna put the pastry dough back into the fridge. Into melted butter, add the parsley, basil, and the chives. And you definitely have my attention with that. That is <laughs> pretty awesome. I need to drain and dry my potatoes. All right, I mean, that's gotta be six cups worth of potatoes. Yeah, I'd say that's perfect. Okay. Spread one third onto the bottom of the pastry dough. Pour one third of this butter herb mix here. Add some salt, crack in some pepper. Repeat what you just did. Some more potatoes. <laughs> this thing is wild. More of the herb mix. Get that all over there. The rest of the potatoes. Yeah, you get, you get it now, right? The rest of the herb butter. Fold overhanging pastry over the potatoes. All right, so there's some holes in the pastry from the potatoes. It's like stabbed it. <laughs> so I just like patch it up a bit. Water on the top of that pastry, because I know what's coming next. Well, because I read the recipe. Put this aside for a sec. Sprinkle a little flour on there. Remaining dough. So in this time we need a circle nine and a half inches in diameter. Okay, I think that's gonna work for what I need. That goes up and down onto, so I gotta press it down over the balls of my fingers, over the moistened part of the pastry underneath. Okay, this thing is awesome. I love this thing. I mean, this recipe I'm following is super vague, but thanks to my training, I kind of know what the hell she's talking about. I need to make a chimney. I've done it before, and we return to chimney making with this one. Pretty straightforward. Just need to cut a hole in the center, right? Make a chimney hole in the top. Yeah. I know I can just use a pipe and bag nozzle and just kind of jam it in there, if you know what I mean. Beat an egg. All over the top with the back of a knife or a table fork. Make cross hatch marks over the pastry with the back of a knife or the tines of a table fork. I'm gonna tine it. I've come across this cross hatching stuff in the past. I have an idea of what she's going for, so let me just do this to start. Cool, so now that I've gone that way, now we go the opposite way. Does that make sense? Yeah, cross hatchings, make a cross, yes. That makes sense to me. Lower part of the oven for 30 minutes to start until it's deeply brown. Then after that, well, I'll tell you when we get there. So with one third cup of heavy cream, I'm gonna add in the remaining egg. This goes in the fridge, saving this for later. So I gotta clean up this, um, this mess, you know? So that's probably gonna take me around half an hour and then by the time that's done, we'll check on the tort. Yikes, yikes, yikes. Got an emergency over here. Uh, I didn't put a baking dish underneath the springform pants. All the butter, everything is just kind of dripping out onto the bottom of the, the oven. So I'm just gonna fix that. Okay, we're gonna have to be quick. Problem solved. Please don't go off smoke alarm. Please don't go off. I gotta bake this initially for the 30 minutes until the pastry is nicely but not too deeply brown. I'm gonna turn the oven down to 350F and I'm gonna continue baking this for another 30 minutes. Okay, so it's been a full hour, full hour in the oven. 
I think it looks pretty cool. Look at the freaking steam coming out of that chimney. That's a well-made chimney. Uh, what do I need? Speaking of that chimney hole, I gotta pour this cream egg mixture into it. What I gotta do first is I gotta check to see if the potatoes are cooked through. So let's just remove the chimney for a second. So I'm poking what is a thermometer through the chimney hole and I'm just making sure that the potatoes are tender enough for me to proceed. You better bet your ass they are. So let's do exactly what I was about to do. Create some sort of funnel here. So here you go. Okay, the first batch is down. <laughs> this is awesome. Okay, do that initially. <gasps> my bad. Just messed up royally, so hopefully no one notices. I don't think you'll notice. I mean, I gotta say, in my defense here, that is a kind of weird step, right? Like, it's not just me. The problem is it's not dispersing into the pie. Go in there, cream. Let's try a little more. Oh, this task sucks. This is what she told me to do. Buy the spoonfuls, pour the egg cream mixture into the pie through the chimney, tilting in all directions. Well, that's exactly what I'm doing. And it will, f apparently the cream's gonna flow all over, but there's so much damn potato and nonsense in this pie that it's not going anywhere. Sorry, I'm angry now. Ah, it's so freaking hot. Go in there. I think that's as Go into the pie, you creamy egg. This idea is not great. It's not a good step. I don't, I don't recommend this step. All right, I'm not doing any more of that. I was having a great time until that happened. So let's bake this for another five minutes so that this mixture sets. Let's put it here. Figure out a way to uh, open this sucker. Easy or hard? Give me an answer. Incredibly easy. That's just gonna blend into the cutting board, so I'm gonna just do a... Uh... Okay, now. <laughs> so for my final trick here, I'm just gonna take a little parsley and put it into the center, because that's what I saw other people do online. This right here is the final piece to the puzzle. That should about do it. Order up. I mean, it's about time that we cut the sucker open, see what's going on on the inside. That's hot. Oh, but it's good. It's really good. Whoa. So hot. The cream egg mix did not disperse throughout the entire pie, obviously. It's only in the center area. If that was able to spread throughout the entire pie, it would be even better than it already is. Maybe it's spread throughout the rest of the pie and just not on the side that I cut. It's worth a shot to look, right? Not really. You can see that's what we're missing. I wish that was spread throughout the entire pie. It would add a lot. That's the undercarriage. It's not too shabby, not too shabby at all, honestly. I did some damage. I did some, some serious damage here. Tort limousine is something I'm gonna be thinking about for a while. Is everyone sleeping on this tort limousine? I've never heard of it before, but all of a sudden it's stolen my heart. It's stolen it. Or it's enlarged it. Okay, is there anything better than this? There's a buttery, flaky pie crust. Enclosing a tender potato and herbaceous filling. The soft potatoes mixed with the freshness of the parsley and the oniony kind of vibe going on with the chives and 
basil in there, whatever the hell basil tastes like. I can't think straight right. The lack of meat in this dish is surprising considering, you know, the dishes we've made along the way with the French cooking, with Julia's recipes, you know, usually she'd throw some ham in there and it would work really well in here, but you know, I wasn't missing it either. This thing is beautiful with or without the ham. That's it. That's all. This was Jamie and Julia. Bon appetit. Au revoir. <laughs> Having a bit of a um, potato off, a potato challenge, if you will. Remember, with the cheesy scalloped potatoes, the palm anna, potato pancakes, and the tort limousine. So the question is, of those three dishes that I've made so far, which one is the best? To answer that question, it's not the same league. It's not the same sport. It's not the same planet. This is tort limousine is all the way at the top. I can't believe how good that thing is. There was a slight downside to everything. Obviously that 